Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, it's more of just a tip and trick video because I've gotten a lot of questions about how the corner trim detail is done on our buildings. I've never actually really taken you through an in-depth tutorial on that and I'll show you how we make it look like a seamless one-piece corner. So first, I've already cut my bottom and I cut it to the dimension uh, measured from the bottom of my base trim and I give myself about an inch over the top of my Wayne's Coat transition Z flashing right here. So what I'm gonna do first, since my base trim is one inch, and you'll see I've got a protective coating here on the trim. That's because, especially with these dark colors, my, uh, my metal manufacturer, Metal Sales, they do this for us. It's a nice little added bonus. Yes, it becomes somewhat of a pain when you're dealing with all the garbage, it's a really nice added benefit when you're dealing with dark trims because it's going to get scratched if you don't. So I'm basically marking one inch up on this leg here um, and I'm going to cut this out. So I got to do it on both sides. Hopefully that wind is not too bad. Now you'll notice I'm going to use my green snips on this side so that it doesn't stress the leg of trim that I'm keeping. You see how it kind of stressed this side? It's not doing anything to this one. So that's what I'm gonna do on this side. And then when I get over to this side, I'll go ahead and use my reds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now that I have these one inch little knockouts at the bottom, that is what's gonna set right on top of my base trim like so. So this is going to lap over my base trim, but then I got this to deal with up here because it doesn't just magically work. You gotta do a little manipulation. So what I like to do is I'm gonna mark on the edge just underneath the top leg of my Wayne's Coat trim. And then over here, I'm gonna mark in line and I'm just gonna eyeball this but if you know if it's your first time go ahead and set your square there right on the edge give yourself a little mark don't try to be too perfectly tight otherwise it's gonna be a little bit of a pain and you'll see why let me mark this side and now what I'm doing with those marks same sort of thing I'm gonna cut this out but it's a little bit different first I'm gonna make my cut into my uh, bend here we'll get this out of the way then I'm gonna take my reds and the reds are important for this cut because you'll see I'm gonna make a little double slit on this metal to this mark but I want it to roll inside so I'm gonna use my reds here then I'm gonna take my greens you see how it pushed this side down this side up it's going to do the exact opposite on this side. So now I've got this nice little slit that I'm going to bend in. You don't have to break it off. What I'm doing is creating a nice rolled edge right here instead of a cut edge. So now let's do the other side. Okay, so now what we just did was we created a slit for this trim to sit in. So you'll see what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of stick it in there, slide it up nice and tight. And now that's gonna give this all the way up here. And now we're sitting perfect on my base trim down here. Everything is looking good. So this is what the first piece is gonna look like. Now we gotta pull this plastic off and we'll get this one fastened and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the upper piece, which to be quite honest, the upper piece is probably a lot easier than this piece. Once you have this done, the upper one's easy. Now, one thing that I wanna say is that Metal Sales has been our metal manufacturer now for, what do you think, Greg, seven years? 
I'll say six. Yeah, okay, somewhere in that time frame. And we've kind of worked with them over the course of a, a lot of those years to try to dial these things in. So if you're working with a supplier, you gotta make sure that these dimensions are consistent from piece to piece. Otherwise, these one piece trims, they don't work well because things don't line up. All right, now I'm gonna show you a little trick here when installing these trims or really any trim how you can make it a little bit easier on yourself to make sure like i said the plastic does become a little annoying when it comes to the trash side of it but what we're going to do is i'm going to take my punch now this is just a uh, awl an awl and this is what we use to punch our steel what i like to do is kind of get the piece of trim right where i like it Take the punch and just whack it. Get it in there. Now that one is being held right where you want it so that you can come and make sure that you can get this other side perfect. I'll just leave that punch in there while I finish all the other sides. Now, if you're wondering why I do the uh, pull in or push in the screw, then pull it back out. That's because, especially when you're going through a double hem like that on the, the edge of the steel, there's a hem here where the steel is rolled back on itself. It gives a nice stiff edge, but it also means when you put that screw in, that hem will open up and it will kind of give a little bit of a pucker. So you have to almost release the pressure. So if you look at this right here, you can see a good example of this here. I don't know if you can get that, Greg, but you see as I screwed it in, it basically gapped my steel. So when I come back in here, release it, you see how it released the pressure? And then I can make a nice clean screw. And now we've got those other three screws in, we're just gonna pull this punch out and that gave us a nice clean hole to go into all right now we're gonna move on to the upper piece and I've already done the other ones on this building but what I recommend is right where this right where this piece of trim ends which is right along this rib uh, you're gonna to want to get your dimension for your long point because this is a pitched angle up there at the roof line on the soffit and then the other side should be the same dimension as your side steel so it's pretty easy to know that um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut this piece so what we got is a 112 dimension that's on my side wall side and then up my long point is 116 and a half so i'll just make those points on the edge of my steel take my square and remember that 116 and a half is actually this dimension way out here and I've got a 412 pitch on my roof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my square at 412. I'm gonna slide it till this is right on my mark, 412. And I'm gonna mark it. So that pitch that I just marked on this is my soffit pitch. Now, this dimension could change based on the dimension of your trims, but we're a 7 8 rib on our steel. So what I like to do, so it's not too tight, is and this will all make sense as it comes together is I'm going to make a three quarter inch line down to my 112 mark and squared across that 112 mark being my sidewall so now I don't know if you can see this in the camera but we've got the 112 which is going to go up underneath of my sidewall soffit trim then it's going to come up this is that three quarter um, mark that I made and it's going to come over to the pitch cut to the 116. So let's go ahead and cut it and then you'll see exactly what we just did. I'm just going to kind of cut through real quickly to get rid of this part.
Okay, we'll always dry test it before we pull the plastic off, just because just it's nice if you gotta pull it. The more times you have to move it around, the more chances it's gonna get scratched. There you go, that went in there like butter. Uh, let me pull that back down to pull the plastic and then I'll show you guys what we did on that top trim cut. So uh, hopefully it makes good sense. So here you can see this was the 112. This is gonna go up underneath of your uh, sidewall soffit. It's gonna tuck into that trim. Then we've got this dimension here that is actually just sticking this out so it's nice and tight up on the face of our um, e or sorry our gable soffit and then this is what's tucking up into there so this is basically closing up the hole keeping it nice and clean and uh, let's go ahead and put it up there and then we'll show you the finished product because I think that's what's important for you guys. We're going to leave that. Let's go up top and we'll show you what it looks like. So here's the detail up at the soffit. You can see right where we've got that three quarter. See how that tucks into this uh, soffit J up here real nice. And then that 112 dimension is cut right underneath to go in here. So it's a real nice tight connection. You're not gonna be getting anything you know, big in there. Uh, no wind driven rain is gonna make it that way under the soffit. And then over here, you've got your 412 pitch that we put on up here nice and tight so i think it really cleans it up i'm not a fan of a bird box which on a one foot overhang there's definitely no need for it but as this extends out people have asked me what we do on a taller or longer overhang we would do the same detail up until like a three foot overhang at three foot this will terminate into a piece of trim and then we'll run our steel over and if i get the opportunity to show you guys that in the future i will um, but this is how this goes together let's go ahead and wrap it up